Hello, my name is Jay Johnson. And I'm Dr. Richard Hansen. And this is SAM. SAM stands for Strength and Mobility. This is SAM Phase 1 Hard Days. So we're going to talk about core strength, hip strength, and hip mobility. And you've seen many of the exercises if you've looked at SAM 1 Easy Day. So if you haven't watched that video yet, check out SAM Phase 1 Easy Day. So for core strength on the hard day, we're, we're still doing planks, but we're going to be doing 20 seconds for this prone plank here. Now we're not going to show you all, all 20 seconds of it, but you want to do this for, for 20 seconds. And this will be challenging for a, a lot of you if, if you haven't done this before, but, but trust this. Trust that if you do this for several weeks, you'll be able to, to knock this out. Um, all of these planks that, that you'll be seeing here add up to 90 seconds, so a minute and a half of plank work. And, and like I said, within a couple weeks, you'll, you'll be able to handle that. What, 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 what's going on here other than just trying to get six-pack abs? Well, you're trying to build core endurance because the, the abdominals work as a corset when you're running to help stabilize the spine. So you're trying to build the efficiency of how the, the entire abdominal cavity works together. Yeah. So, so folks, I mean, not that you won't get nice abs, but that's not the point of doing the plank. Now here when Jenny goes into the split squat, we're creating a little bit of eccentric strength to the hamstring and the glute. Eccentric strength is extremely important for running because it's what's helping you become efficient with your gait mechanics as you propel forward. It's storing energy and expelling that energy. So eccentric phases are extremely important. When she's in the split squat motion, she's also creating a little bit of proprioception, which again, she's adding in here with the side swap squat. I'd like her hips to be a little bit lower, um, but she's doing a great job of keeping her hips relatively stable as she steps with a big wide gate um, to activate that glute and move into plane different than what she does when she's running. Folks, th this exercise you, you've maybe seen before, good morning, it's a very simple exercise, but runners are weak in their posterior chain, so the back of the body. So that's what's being worked here, the, the, the back of the body with this very simple good morning exercise. And just make sure to keep your spine relatively straight and neutral with this. You just want the stretch being placed on the hamstring. With the bird dog motion, you're creating a little bit of instability at the core and the hips. You wanna keep the back nice and stable as you extend the hip out and back with the, arm, the opposite arm slow and controlled. Touch the hand in the underneath your body as you extend that glute back. Good. So, so this is a good example here of, of her back being fairly straight. And then clams, you, 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 uh, you've no doubt seen this um, if you've been to a physical therapist's op office. Reverse clams you may not have seen, and then we'll also show you reverse air clams, which might be something new. And all of these, even though they're strength exercises, they create a lot of dynamic mobility throughout different planes of motion to help open up that whole hip complex. Great, so this one's simple, toe in, toe neutral, toe out, and just make sure that obviously if you're doing them on one side, you flip over and, and lay on the other side to, to get both sides. All right, hip mobility hard day. This, this is going to be a little bit different than what we've, we've done before. Uh, first one is donkey kicks. And with the hip mobility routine, this just creates a lot of blood flow supply to the, the whole hip complex. This can take the place of a lot of your static stretching routines because now you're creating blood flow, you're moving the tissue in and out of its full range of motion, and you're allowing a lot of capsular motion, which creates a process called imbibition, which is a pumping mechanism at that joint to help move fluid in and out to keep that joint a little bit healthier. So, so I've heard the, the term juicing the joint. I mean, is, is, that, is that basically what you're talking about here? Yeah, it's basically taking an oil can to the joint just to keep it lubricated so you can move in and out of that full range efficiently. Okay, folks, there you go. Sam, phase one, hard day.